Okay, so this week you're working on this lab 10 here, which is surface water and groundwater. So the first section here goes through streams and topographic maps. So the Red River that it's referring to is this guy down here. So this blue squiggly line is what it's talking about. So you're going to talk about whether it's a meandering stream, braided stream, where you'd find it. Um, and then it's going to ask you for deposition and erosional features. So remember, <clears throat> as water comes around the bank, it cuts into the bank, which would be your erosion. And on each inside version of the curve, you have your deposition where it leaves stuff behind. So uh, remember the surface water PowerPoint we went over actually in class. That's where you're, what you're going to refer to when you are working on this section. All right, and then section two <clears throat> is looking at groundwater movement. So this is um, where we would have done an actual experiment in class with gravel, sand, salt, and clay and watched material actually flow through or water flow through the material. Um, but instead, we're going to try to do it virtually. So you're going to click on this link here. Um, and it'll take you to a little screen that has each of these different types of material and then you'll click compare and it'll run water through one meter of each of the material types. So then you'll write down how long it took to travel. And so the clay is going to be a long, long time. So <clears throat> because the clay is going to take a while, it'll probably give it to you in years. And so to figure out the number of minutes that would be, you just multiply however many years it says that clay took for water to go through one meter. You multiply that number by 31,449,600 minutes, and that'll give you the number of minutes so that you can calculate your flow rate in meters per minute, okay? So your flow rate is just gonna be your amount of material divided by the time it took. So for instance, if it took gravel one minute, the flow rate would be one meter per minute, okay? After that, you have a couple of questions to answer here related to permeability and porosity. This here, you're comparing permeability, not necessarily porosity. Um, porosity is the amount of water that you could fit into it. I'm not sure I understand. Then, <clears throat> the next section is looking at groundwater contour maps. So um, I posted these maps on Canvas as well. They um, are in PDF form. So you should be able to open those and see those um, in the web browser or in um, uh, Adobe PDF on your computer. Um, and you'll see that there is a star in the center of all of the maps. And each of the, map is a, each of the maps are a different year. So this first one here is 1958. So on this, on the lab here, you'll go 1958 and you'll write down what the approximate elevation is there. So <clears throat> on this first one, you can see, it's just like reading a topographic map. You can see the star is right here. And if you look, it lies somewhere between 220 and 200. So these are contour lines that show you the elevation of the groundwater. So this isn't depth to water, this is the actual elevation of the groundwater. So in Fresno, we sit around 350 approximately feet above sea level. <clears throat> so our groundwater is still technically above sea level. So it's 200 to 220. So we're going to estimate around 210. So you'll take that number and you'll put it in here and you write 210 feet. Okay, or you can put FT for short. So you go through each of the years and you'll write down what the elevation is. Okay, and then you're going to answer these questions. It'll ask you to compare um, different time periods, so like 1958 to 1995, and you're going to be answering what you think is happening to the groundwater. Is it lowering? Is it raising? If it's doing either of those things, what could be causing that? All right. And then the last part here is looking at creating your own contour map. So this part is probably going to be the most difficult section for most, just because it's a little bit new, I mean, it does have a little bit of math in it. But the good news is you've already really done this with topographic maps. So <clears throat> I think it's activity two or activity one. Um, you were given specific elevation points 
and they said A through F, I believe, and you had to label what the elevation was and then draw the contours. You're doing the same thing, but it's represented as groundwater instead of topography. And then there are some definitions here um, that I didn't specifically talk about in the PowerPoint, but we are gonna touch a little bit in the lab. So groundwater flow rate is basically how fast the water can flow, and that's dependent on something called the hydraulic conductivity. So the hydraulic conductivity is um, K, so we'll have an equation down here that we'll use that in a minute. Um, this is really just a fancy term for permeability. So this is just a term that basically means the permeability of the material it's flowing through. And then the hydraulic gradient is just a fancy term for slope. So when it's asking you to calculate the hydraulic gradient, that's just a fancy word for slope, but it's a different term instead of saying slope because usually slope refers to topography and not necessarily groundwater. Hydraulic, con or sorry, hydraulic gradient specifically refers to groundwater. Okay. So <clears throat> hydraulic conductivity, um, there's a definition here, but basically the rate and distance over time at which water moves through a permeable medium is the permeability. So that's meters per second, just like you calculated in the second part with that online um, simulation. You calculated it in meters per minute, but here we're looking at it in meters per second. And the hydraulic gradient is... Um, denoted as I in the equation that we'll use. And so that's just the change in distance, or sorry, the change in head, which is change in elevation, divided by the distance over time, or sorry, the distance between which set occurs, excuse me. So it's just rise over run, or delta H over delta L. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then Darcy's Law is how we actually calculate the amount of water that flows through the medium. So we use the hydraulic gradient, the conductivity, and the area. It's a cross-sectional area. Okay. So first thing here that you're going to do is you're going to label all the monitoring wells with the appropriate groundwater elevations. So your map is on this last page here, page six. Okay. So you're gonna take, so for M1, our elevation is 224 feet. M2 is 259. Three is 229. Four is 234. Five is 264. And six is 229. Okay, so that's the first step. The next step, it says, number two, is to create the groundwater contours based on what you have been given. So we're gonna use a contour interval of five feet. So we're gonna write down here to remind ourselves, contour interval, five feet, okay? So, what we're gonna do is I would start off with even things. I wouldn't start one of your um, contours at 229. I would start at 230. Okay, so <clears throat> between 229 and 224, we know it's going down. Between 229 and 234, it's going up. Between 229 and 259, it's going up. And then between 259 and 264, it's going up. So this section here is our highest. So this is where our peak will be in our groundwater. So I would say your last contour should be 260. So between here and here, that's the only five foot contour that would exist, right? So you'd put a 260 in here, probably a little closer to MW2 here. So you have a 260 there. Between these two, you're gonna have a 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So you're going to have a lot in between here. And then here you're also going to have quite a few. So, let's see, we've got 35 will be pretty close. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, we'll call it that. 240, 245, 
250 to 55. Okay, so then we've got between here and here, we also have the 235, so I can wrap that around, the 240, the 245, 250, 255, and then a 260. So now I can kind of connect those ones. I'll probably go something more like that. And then I'll erase it. Rewrite that there. Okay, so you can already kind of see it kind of taking shape. So it's the same thing we did with um, topography maps. You're gonna go again between these two and figure out what you need. And once you get your map created, then you know which way everything is flowing. So remember, water flows downhill, even underground. Okay, so it's always going to flow from your highest to your lowest. Okay, so once you have that done, then you're going to determine the direction of flow. So um, you'll figure out which way it's flowing, and then you'll be able to write down what compass direction this is. So on here, it does have a north arrow, so you'll be able to tell which compass direction it's moving. Okay, and then the next part is a little bit on the tedious side, but it's for good reason. This will help you with your um, hydraulic gradients in a second. So between each of the different wells, so there's six wells, so there's a lot of different combinations for distances between wells. So between one and two, what is the distance? Between one and three, what is the distance? So down here, um, after you get all of those distances um, figured out, so you're gonna use your, there's a scale here on the bottom of the map, bottom right hand corner. You can use the side of a piece of paper if you don't have a ruler at home, or you can use a ruler to figure out what the distance between them are. So for purposes, for these purposes, we are going to do one and two. That way I can show you how to do the gradient. So here's one, here's two. So if you're using paper, here's 10. Here's 20, 30, 40, 50, we'll call that 55, that's really close. So 55 feet between one and two. Okay, so that's useful for calculating our hydraulic gradient between one and two. So I'll do one and two for you and or with you, and then um, you'll do three and five on your own. So you want the change in head over the distance between the two. So the change in head is going to be MW1's elevation minus MW2 divided by their distance. So this is elevation, the distance between MW1 and MW2. So we already calculated their distance. So their distance is 55 feet. And what is their change in elevation? So their change in elevation, the elevation of number one, well, one is 224 and two is 259. So remember, this is always absolute value when you're calculating slope. So 259 minus 224. Okay, so you just take the 259 minus 224, and that gives you 35, oops, 35 over 55. And the feet drop out, so you're just left with this fraction. Or you can turn it into a decimal if you um, put it into the calculator. And I think, you know, to the tenths is fine for that answer. Okay? So then you do the same thing for the next two wells. Okay, and then number six is going to ask you why are the gradients different in this one, um, in this question. So you'll do this one. I would take it to decimal point around decimal places and then calculate this one and try to figure out why they're different. 
Then for number seven, the last question here is asking you, based on the data that you have and the map that you created, um, where would the pollution travel if MW4 was contaminated with something called tetrachloroethylene, which shorthand is PCE. It's a chlorinated solvent that is commonly used in the dry cleaning business. Um, and then which wells would actually be affected? So you look at your map, yours will be more complete by this point. Um, and you'll, it's contaminating MW4, and you're gonna look at whatever is down gradient or down slope of MW4, those wells will likely be affected. So you'll just zoom into this little section, look at where the water flows, and then write down which wells you think are going to be affected by that. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, if you have any other questions, you can email me, you can message me on Canvas, you can text me, you can contact me on Discord. Um, you can also talk to each other on Discord or on Canvas in the, I call it the Rock Cafe, Hard Rock Cafe discussion post. Um, and yeah, so hopefully this helped you guys and I will see you guys soon.